From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello? Who is it? Hello? Hello? Johnny, who is it? I don't know, Countess. Maybe they weren't expecting a man to answer. Or at least not me. I would not know about that. What about this guy who was lying unconscious in your closet? Would you know anything about that? No, Johnny. I didn't think you would. I'll give him another shot of those smelling salts. I think he's coming too. Good. Maybe he'll know about some of these things. Yes, he will. Some of them. And of course he will tell you. I was hoping it would not be brought out. I did not want you to know. Murder is usually brought out sooner or later. Not murder, Johnny. It is not that simple. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Algiers, North Africa, to the Home Office Transworld Fidelity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Lorco Diamonds Matter. Expense account continued. Item six, $9.30, smelling salts and a bottle of scotch. The smelling salts were needed for a double-talking fellow named Zeindorf, who'd managed to get himself gassed half to death in a closet. A representative of your client who suffered the $100,000 loss, Lorco Diamonds of Amsterdam. The scotch was for me. Johnny, he doesn't like it. Should I go on holding them under his nose? Yeah, sure. Keep shoving them at him until he's strong enough to fight you off. That's how smelling salts work. A person has to come to and sheer self-defense. Nein. Nein, stop. It's more too plenty already. My nose is killed dead no more. Maybe even poking it into the wrong places. What were you doing in that closet, Mr. Zeindorf? It's nothing. I can tell you the entire thing in two words. Use more if you need them, but make it good. Nobody is finding this beautiful diamond. Nobody is doing anything. So I come looking for my own self. In that closet? Nine is only for hiding. I am waiting for everybody going away, going at sleep. Then I am going to looking. In my apartment. What made you think they would be here? You are pleased to forgiving me, Fräulein. But I am not taking the chance. I am think to looking every place. Who turned on the gas out there? Do not ask it. I, I know nothing. I... I think I have sleeping some, maybe, and when I have waking, I am died almost. Yeah. Well, apparently somebody was out to get one of us, at least. Hey, what about that maid of yours, Maria? Or is the one? Of course. She... You know, that is strange. She disappeared about the time you arrived, slipped out without a word. Does she live here? I think she lives up in the Casbah. I hire her through the agency. I see. Do you think she did it? Oh, the more I find out, the less I'm sure of. Maybe Mr. Zeindorf did it, trying to commit suicide over his missing trinkets. Nine. Suicide is, is one thing I am not. And I, I desist to listen no more. I am to leave here immediate. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Zeindorf. Yeah, what is it? As I understand it, you boys in the international jewelry business are ordinarily pretty cautious in your dealings. Yeah, yeah, the prudence, my dear. Always the entire prudence. That's what I mean. You always investigate a new client thoroughly before you take any chances, is that right? It's entire correct. Johnny, no. Then why did you send $100,000 worth of diamonds here to Algiers at the request of a woman who doesn't have a cent to her name? Ach, why it is to me these things are always happen. My dear dollar, I am the highest ethic of business. I cannot give you answering. Well, one of you better give me an answering. Oh, it is all right, Mr. Zandorf. Please... Please, you tell Contessa. All right. What he is trying to say, Johnny, is this. It did not matter about my financial standing because I was not actually a client. What do you mean? You ordered the stuff? Yes. Several pieces and approval so I could make a selection. Anything up to $20,000. Somebody else was paying for it. It was being given to me as a gift. By whom? A fellow countryman of yours, a man named Charles Barrett. He's been here three months, lives on his yacht. Mr. Zeindorf, 
How did you know this man Barrett would pay for the diamonds? By the letter, my dear. What letter? When I wrote to the local firm, I took the liberty of enclosing a letter written to me by Mr. Barrett. His own authentical signings. We investigate immediately. What sort of a letter was it? He promised to pay for a gift of jewelry up to $20,000 of my own selection in return for certain considerations. What considerations? Romantic, mine hair. It is a little present of the engagement. Is that what it was, Maria? An engagement present? Yes. I see. I, I think I go now. It's too much has happened in this place. Is it all right to smoke now? Yeah, sure. The gas is cleared out. Here. I wish you hadn't kissed me, Johnny. I thought you said you liked it. I did. That is why I wish you hadn't. Are you trying to say that... Oh, relax, Johnny. I am not a child. No, I have not fallen in love with you any more than you have with me. But I could very easily. Well, what about this man, Barrett? What's he like? Oh, an overbearing, spoiled, middle-aged little boy. The price sounds kind of high. What else is there? Ever think of working? Where? At what? In Italy, yes. But you know what's open there for an impoverished countess. Yeah, I know. And I suppose you can't get a work permit anywhere else, is that it? Oh, forget it, Johnny. All I know how to do is be highly ornamental, say the right things to the right people, do the right things at the right time, and eat by stealing caviar at cocktail parties. You go hungry a lot that way. Yeah, I guess it's rough. Well, don't let it throw you, honey. You're not the first girl who married for money. Well, I guess you don't understand. Nobody has said anything about marriage. Oh, I see. Well, Johnny, I imagine you would be leaving now. So, good night, Johnny. Goodbye. For all the progress I'd made in the case, I might as well have stayed at home. Another fish off the hook. Logical suspect number one had been the customs property agent, Andre Jardin. But the blow on the head that sent him to the hospital hadn't been faked. And that, plus the fact the diamond courier had shown symptoms of poisoning before the plane even landed, seemed to leave Andre in the clear. And now number two, Maria Countess Dettelia, was apparently able to supply another answer every time she needed one. And her answers were backed up by Hans Zeindorf, Lorco's own representative. We were shortcutting through the harbor district when I began to realize that the same car had been behind us ever since we'd left Maria's. It was a low-slung English job, expensive and easy to recognize. Driver. Oui, monsieur? Hit the gas a little harder. See if you can shake that car behind us. Ah, uh, mais oui. The other car picked up speed to match ours and still held the same distance. They try a couple of fast corners. I want to make sure. Yeah? The next place where the street narrows down. Stop fast. Swing crosswise. Block off the road. I want to stop that guy and have a talk with him. Hey, you understand what I mean? Mais oui, monsieur. It's just like in the movies. Yeah, well, something like that. And yeah, there's a place coming up. Let's, let's have a go at it. You do not worry. I will do it good. Yeah, I only hope we've seen the same movies. I was out of the cab fast and running back down the street. The other driver had jammed on his brakes and finally skidded to a stop against the curb. I reached for the handle, jerked the door open, and the man inside came out swinging. A big man, little on the beefy side, but plenty tough. I didn't know him, never seen him before. He fought silently and fought hard, but he was a sucker for a lift. I knelt down on the pavement and started to go through his pockets. I hadn't even noticed the other car pull up. Monsieur Dallin. Huh? Do you merely plan to rob him, or do you also intend to cook him and eat him? How oh, you really get around, Inspector. The policeman must socialize, monsieur. It broadens the outlook. Come, we walk. My chauffeur will take care of reviving your victim. Do you happen to know the victim? Yeah, may we? He's Monsieur Charles K. Barrett of Chicago. 
Maria's ex-boyfriend. Mm, something of this sort, I believe. How did you happen to get here so conveniently? Oh, I was following you. Uh, farther back, of course. Then why didn't you pitch in when the fight started? And spoil such a remarkable display of fisticuffs? Okay, okay. It is true the footwork was mediocre, but the verb, the enthusiasm, the violence, superb, monsieur. I can't quite figure you, Inspector. Well, sometime we must talk about it. Uh, monsieur... You will be most happy to know that we have identified the person who occupied the plane seat next to the diamond courier. Oh? They shared a bottle of wine during the flight. Undoubtedly, that is how the poison was administered. And who is the person? A man named Bobo. Bobo? Oui. He is well known in the Kasbah. He is a thief, smuggler, dope peddler, and it is said he can be hired as a killer. Have you picked him up yet? Well, I have not tried to. Why not? Uh, why not? Monsieur, in the Kasbah, at the sight of a uniform, everyone vanishes, zzz, like rabbits in their holes. The Kasbah, huh? Oh, another thing. The property agent who was struck on the head, André Jordin, he has disappeared from the hospital. Disappeared? How? His window was open, the room was upset. It was very odd. Yeah. Well, look, Inspector, uh, I think I'll get on back to the hotel and uh, get some sleep. Yes. As you wish. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Maybe. Oh, there is one more thing, uh, Monsieur Dallin. Huh? I think perhaps I should warn you of something in the event you should call again on the Comtesse. Warn me of what? Well, two days ago, I installed a dictaphone in her apartment. You what? I must admit I found your conversation this evening most entertaining. Inspector... You are a rat. Oh, please do not concern yourself in the least. I am the soul of discretion. Maybe. Monsieur, I am a Frenchman. Twice tonight, the Casbah had been mentioned. A strange, mysterious native quarter on the steep hill behind the city. Maria had said her maid lived there. And now Bobo, who'd given poison wine to the diamond courier. I had an angle, and I had some ideas. The picture was finally starting to make sense. But I needed some more answers. And the trail led into the Casbah. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Lorco Diamonds matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a bungling fool, a tightening net, and a violent death in a crooked alley of the Casbah. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.